Thank you very much, Armina, and um, thank you, everyone. Uh, do gather round because we're going to unpack uh, what um, consultancy can look like, what mentoring can look like, um, and what a passion for creating something that has pro-social purpose um, at its heart, but isn't product. Um, because that was actually your desire, you thought, Tina, wasn't it? What I, what I will do, because I've jumped ahead here, I will just get you to introduce yourself just a little bit about you and the brand. Yeah, so um, hi, I'm Tina. I'm the co-founder and creative director of Kelechi. So Kelechi, we are a research agency and collective, and our work is around humanizing fashion. So essentially, our work is thinking about how we can make new models in the fashion supply chain that are people and planet facing. Um, so we do this through our different initiatives, but our work is really around kind of like how can we be an open source for, I guess, the industry and also just kind of people to think about how we can put community first and then product afterwards, thinking about how we can kind of create for a better, I guess, world, because we have to. Thank you. And I love that key phrase, humanizing fashion, um, which has essentially been um, taken place in various forms here. I, uh, if you were in the audience earlier, I will just condense my little intro. I've worked in fashion for over 40 years, very much as a commentator um, uh, through media. And um, latterly, I moved into applied psychology because I really felt I kept coming up against barriers. And so with my Master of Science, I could bring science into the room as well as feminism because I wanted to see those changes, but there uh, there was resistance, as we all know. And that's been the theme of the day to a certain extent as well, as being honest about the things we want to see and the fact that we're not seeing them fast enough. So um, I'll get you uh, then to, to give me just a little bit about you've... Um, you, you've come out of the kind of creative training and you want to move in and engage with the wonderful world of fashion, clothing, narratives, identities, what it is to be human, mm. but you know that you don't want to make product? So our journey as Kelechi started, so I don't have kind of a traditional fashion background. Um, I did an A-level in textiles, a GCSE in textiles, thought I wanted to be a designer, still probably that deep down want to be a designer. Um, and same passion with my sister, so she has more of a textile background in terms of like self-taught sewing. Um, and then we thought like, let's make a brand. So I was studying history and politics as an undergrad at the time. Um, and she was doing loads of kind of like sewing courses and different things. We joined Makeaversity, which is a uh, uh, co-working space in Somerset House. Um, and they were like, oh, you should meet more people like yourself. So after we did that, we kind of started doing these kind of talks, these events, and then we met a lot of people in fashion. We started to make these talks a bit more like, um, you know, like thought-led, and that's where we came across this topic of sustainability. And then we started realizing, like, wait, there's such a big issue here. Why do we want to produce clothing as two independent people who don't have an existing platform? What's our purpose here? What is it that we're actually doing? Um, and that's where we kind of began starting doing more thought-led, sustainable, I guess, events, more of an educational perspective. When lockdown hit, because a lot of what we were doing was all about kind of people meeting and interacting, when lockdown hit, that's when we thought, like, how can we reposition ourselves and what does this platform that we've created, this community that exists, what does that look like? Um, and that's when we formed Kelechi, because we were thinking, you know, what's missing is the fact that there's so many people in this space, there's so many people doing great things, but for some reason, a lot of people are not connected and mm. the work isn't connected mm. in a sense of, you know, you've got great people who have found these new ways to produce, you know, materials or people who are, you know, want to create products, have skills in this area. But it's like, why are we not working together more to think about these new models? Why is it that we're so individualistic and operating kind of separately? So that's when we're like, we're going to start Kelechi and our ethos is going to be around clean fashion, which is this new idea of just looking at every area of the supply chain. So from um, making and manufacturing to kind of media. So my professional background has been in fashion PR, which a lot of the time gets left out in this conversation. And then thinking about afterlife and through that, it's about us constantly investigating how can we create this new community of people who operate in fashion and work together. So I'm going to come back to that point that you made about PR and about engaging people in the narratives. And certainly we've talked about the, the role that we as citizen participants, let's not call ourselves consumers, because we do have a power as individuals. 
but at the fact that we're not necessarily getting the education that we deserve. Mm. We're not, it's not forefront um, of a lot of marketing, a lot of PR. And so for you, that was key, was it, to educate people who, human beings who are wanting to engage in, in, with fashion clothing. We all ultimately do need to uh, buy and wear. So tell us how you came, how you decided to do that. So I think um, through our platform, we were already kind of meeting so many people, so many great people with stories. Like we were learning so much ourselves. And we were like, how does everyone not know about these topics? But I think going kind of beyond education and thinking about fashion itself as an industry, we, you know, we did our research, which is kind of on the screens on um, farming and fashion, this idea of the link between agriculture and fashion. And we have, I know you're you probably going to bring up, but we've got our journal, um, which is our first issue of our journal on fashion and farming. But this idea that kind of like the food industry, people kind of understand health, we understand sustainability, we kind of understand that, you know, you need to put good things inside of you to nourish yourselves, and that makes a good inside. If you do bad, if you do the other way around, then it's kind of bad. Whereas fashion, it's like people know that to a small extent, it's still quite a niche, but it's not an open topic, it's not very universal. Um, a lot of what we find in terms of like, you know, these habits of overconsumption, they're all kind of like mindsets, they're habits, they're things that are ingrained in us, but it's not something that we spend time or have the ability to kind of break down. There's so much to learn in terms of like how fashion impacts us, how materials impact our skin, all of these things. But it's like that information isn't kind of, it's not put out there in an interesting way or in a way where you think like, I should know about that and I should care about that. So for us, it was really about bringing out these stories to show that this is everyday life. When we talk about fashion, we're talking about farming. When we talk about fashion, we're talking about our bodies. When we talk about fashion, it's literally every single person. And I think for us, that kind of education was about like, shifting mindsets on what this platform is. It can feel very kind of, you know, exclusive as an industry. So what we want to do is we want to break it out and talk about clothing. We want to talk about fashion in this new way to present, I guess, this kind of like new way that we can all be a part of it and kind of contribute to it being, you know, less about just consuming, but more about creating together. I mean, that's a, it's a key space, isn't it? That we are all driven to seek, to acquire, um, and these are sort of quite deep psychological drives. And so, but capitalism has intercepted that drive. And without, as we've talked earlier, ethics uh, around um, recognition that we're not being repeatedly sold a kind of medium message of a lifestyle that we should and could acquire for um, increasingly um, a very small amount of money paid over to a fast fashion firm, where we're not getting to grips with the con consumer engagement in fashion. So brands will tell you, um, well, we only supply a demand that's out there. If the consumer wasn't buying it, we wouldn't supply it. Mm. How do, how do we, we tackle this? How, how can we help sort of join things up full circle? Because we've got Brands talking about um, the fact that, well, they're just um, giving the consumer what they need. Mm. And we've got, um, certainly, the, the other side of things, people feeling that they're engaging in, in almost quite addictive behavior that needs to be, uh, there needs to be an intervention somehow. Yeah. Can Kalechi do this? <laughs> um, no pressure. <laughs> I think what Kalechi is trying to do is um, it's this idea that, you know, people are not at the centre. It's actually kind of nature. I mean, we're part of it, but there's a bigger ecosystem. And I think sometimes that what you're talking about with capitalism, this kind of consumerism, it really kind of puts in the spotlight the individual and we need this and we need that, but we're not thinking about that grand scheme. There's very little kind of visibility a lot of the time on the people who make our clothes. It's this idea that you see a finished garment, but you don't see anything else that's part of it. So when we talk about trying to rehumanize fashion, what we do is we have our three initiatives that we work all under this kind of clean fashion umbrella. So we've got a clean fashion summit, which appeared on the screen as well. So that's kind of an ideas forum where people can come together around a topic. And it's about all those people that I was talking about who, you know, we can collaborate with. And it's about discussing these ideas and thinking, how do we work together to do things better? From there, we then produce our journal, which is kind of putting all of those ideas into a format where people can take it away, can digest it, can read it, can apply it. 
And then what we have is kind of our action, which is our knit club. And essentially that is about kind of like bringing people closer to the craft. It's about people coming together, again, through community, but thinking, how can we actually understand how, clothing are, how clothes are made? How can we understand this process? How we can, can we connect with each other? And I think through all of those mediums, it's supposed to give you this kind of new picture that actually we are part of something a lot wider and a lot bigger. It's that kind of ecosystem. It's that idea that nature operates in a way and fashion needs to operate within nature. It needs to operate within something that already exists rather than kind of like making its own bubble. So really when we're saying we're making this new model, it's all about kind of putting us back, in, back into that context. Mm. And then what we're doing as Kelechi is working with people. So when it comes to things like our knit club, you know, it's working with brands to think about how can we kind of bring this into, you know, we've done knit clubs at brand stores before, how can we bring that to your store to bring that to your audience? And then how does that shift how they're going to shop or how they're going to think about things? If you bring it to maybe like an institution, it's kind of like similar. How can we engage new audiences in fashion who otherwise maybe don't care about it or feel like they're not within this kind of context, but actually they realize that, oh, this is actually, I, I, I am part of this space and, and I belong here. And when we talk about our summit, that's something that, you know, we're really kind of passionate about. How do we bring these new voices? So our summit on fashion and farming, for example, farmers are, you know, the beginning of this supply chain. Our material, our, our, our textiles, you know, they come from soil and it's all about kind of having good soil. But a lot of the time, you know, a lot of people don't know farmers or don't have connection to those people. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's about how can we have those voices here and then people being able to work with them so that we can actually have, you know, that kind of full circle. So let's, I mean, we'll just sort of break those things down a little bit, but I'm keen to know, say for instance, you were talking about connectivity, communication, the human element of making. I'm making assumption that everyone is a maker in the crowd. Um, you know, certainly we could take for granted back of years that even people who hadn't chosen to be makers still knew how to make because it was a family thing, clothes needed to be made or repaired. Um, I didn't grow up with a high street because, you know, in the olden days we didn't have one. Um, but the sewing machine was always out in my house, so I took it for granted that mm. we would make clothes and I understood how long it took to make them. But just that of itself has been lost now, isn't it? Mm. What, what impact have you experienced from people engaging in knit club and being able to make things? Um, yeah, so our knit club is actually my favorite and it's because I think we see so many people come and learn. So like we've had Rihanna who worked with us. She didn't know how to knit or crochet before. She learned how to crochet through kind of being part of our knit club started just leading all of our sessions in terms of like crocheting, having her corner. Now she started her own kind of like Etsy and page where she sells her crochet. She does workshops. She just did a nice workshop with some kids yesterday. And it's like they kind of came back connected to us. So it's like we're really kind of bringing people, you know, people are kind of learning something new and like adding to what they can do. Um, we have a teacher who comes to our knit club and she teaches her primary school kids how to, how to knit. So she has an after school club with them. Um, so many people come through our knit club and I think one of the interesting things as well is that it's, it's not necessarily always about kind of, you know, how do I learn to knit so that I can make a business and sell, which at, at one point it's, it's important and it's great to upskill so that we can think about how we can make that new collaborative supply chain. But, you know, we have people who come from like, we've had a lawyer who just loves to come because it's about de-stressing and doing something new, doing something like with your hands because, you know, we're in front of screens all day. We have, you know, people of all ages. I think this cross-generational thing mm. is great. There's, mm. you know, people who are a lot older who come and they used to teach all their kind of kids how to knit when they were younger. And it's great for them to come back and have this purpose and feel like I can teach the younger generation how to knit. There's this kind of new way that we see ourselves operating where we're patient, we're slower, we're just in that zone for those three hours. So the point of this knit club, as well as to kind of think about upskilling and then how do we produce mm. kind of like locally, is also about retraining our minds because everything consumption is so fast. It's so like kind of another planet. So it's like, how do we come back to that way of retraining ourselves to be around people, to, you know, be patient with ourselves? Everything, you learn so much about yourself as well. Like when I knit, my tension used to be so tight at the beginning. And then Emily, who's like a designer who worked with us, She'll be like, why is your tension so tight? Like, what is wrong with you? 
And I think from even those little things, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like that's a reflection of... You're really pulling at the wall. Exactly, yeah. like that's a reflection of just kind of like what I'm gathering up mm. in my, you know, spirit or whatever. Yeah. So it's like letting go and being able to have these new ways because I think everything that we do is rooted in like behavior. Mm. And like we say, you know, it's back to that humanizing thing. It all starts with people. Like, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that we need to, like, unpack and deconstruct ourselves so that we can figure out how do we work in a way that's actually human, in a sense of, like, that goes back to how we're supposed to operate rather than how the system has taught us. We'll sort of touch on how you want to engage with big brands to help kind of revitalize that space. But I'm going to pick up on what you said about slowing things down, which we all know we want to, which, um, you know, for us, you know, slow fashion, slow foods, uh, slow production generally is vital to mental well-being. But I'm just going to share a little something from the world of psychology on our motivations to achieve. Certainly, for instance, let's just say if we're engaging with product and we want to buy something, um, or we want to have something. Um, the brain, you know, creates rewards, um, and it's it's not necessarily the destiny where you think I've got to get there and I've got to get there as fast as possible because that's the space that I will feel good. The dopamine will flow. We obviously don't say that to ourselves, but we think mm. that by acquiring something and by acquiring it quickly, we can suddenly get this fix but it's actually in the seeking. So the journey of moving to that space is where our brain is firing off on lots of different levels and we, we have a sense of well-being and an alignment um, with our purpose because we're not bypassing um, sort of a normal product in the old days, a normal process. It used to be saving up for something and waiting for it and thinking about it. And now all of that's been cut out, all of those positive things. So mm. that slow um, aspect is really important, isn't it? How do you, and I'm just thinking about the, you suggested farm visits, um, you know, for um, buyers looking at fiber mm. who've never uh, actually met the fiber producer. Is, uh, tell us a little bit about the way that Kalichi likes to work. Kalechi, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Kalechi. Um, yeah, so we, we work in quite various different ways. Um, so one way is kind of through our initiatives that we have yeah. already where I kind of mentioned as well, obviously our journal, our summit and our knit club. So it's kind of working with brands to be, who, can, who want to support that and also maybe bring that into like their world. So kind of around programming and thinking about how that can kind of maybe input in terms of like existing things that they're doing or maybe like kind of enhance. Um, and then again, actually, yeah, we have been in discussion with a brand. We haven't kind of officially done it yet, but it's something that we've been in talks about, um, which is doing kind of farm trips. So it's that idea of, and I think it's like the knit club, but then mm. adding another layer to it, where it's that idea of really kind of being immersed and understanding. I think as soon as you do a visit or someone who's not kind of like, you know, well-versed in terms of like where uh, fibers come from, it's so insightful. So kind of planning to do like visits and meeting a lot of these people and being that kind of connector between, um, you know, farmers and people who do this already and, and people who work in brands. And of course, people who work from the supply side will know about it a lot of the time, but it's a lot of people, like for example, me having a background in communications, that stuff is missed out. And it's mm -hmm. really kind of saying that your whole team needs to see this and needs to understand. And there are some brands who do it anyway, but um, it's that thing where it becomes lost, especially with time as things yeah. go so fast, you know, with seasons, etc. cetera, that it, no, no one kind of has time to do it. Um, so yeah, so in terms of like trips, um, programming, but then also research, so working with kind of institutions, working with um, brands as well in terms of like thinking about how can we remodel the supply chain. So we're working at the moment on thinking about how our knit club can become more of a design collective. Um, so we're launching a program towards the end of this year and we're going to work with a local farm that we've worked with in our journal to produce a few kind of pieces that are fully traceable and kind of map out like what does a sustainable garment look like made in the UK and obviously you know figure out is it 100% sustainable 
But from there, it's kind of thinking about how can we work with brands, specifically looking at kind of knitwear and natural fibers in the UK, and how can we kind of, you know, integrate more of this made in the UK, and how can brands be more kind of partners in exploring new supply chain models, um, which is something that a lot of brands are already investing in, but it's really making that commitment to um, localism and to kind mm. of, you know, thinking how can we shift every aspect. So we understand that, you know, we can't make product, as much product as we need to make to be able to make these kind of sales that are, you know, allow, allowing profit. So for Kelechi, we're kind of thinking when we say community first and then product second, we, you know, we still want to make product. It's important for us to be creative. Resources are here in a sense of like a sheep needs to be sheared because for its health. So we're going to have wool regardless, whether it's used or not, that's, you mm. know, how that happens. But we're going to have these natural resources. So it's great that we can use them. But when we don't need to make so many things, how can we actually kind of put back that kind of, I guess, product into experience? So how can we almost have more community things? How can we actually put kind of people back in it? How can we create moments, you know, like our summit or like our knit club or even things that are bigger, even events like this? I mean, I know it's for different purposes, but how can we kind of make experience the bigger product instead mm -hmm. of in replacing um, the needs to kind of make things and clothing constantly. So I'm just going to find out how people can get in touch with you. And then if there are any questions, um, please do put your hand up. So um, the uh, journal, is this uh, an annual journal or a quarterly? Yeah, so this is an annual journal. Um, so it's available in a few places now. It's available on our website, kelechi.com. Um, and it has kind of all of our research. And it's a great kind of starting point in terms of understanding what we do but then also if you want to understand more mm. around this topic and people within this kind of movement, um, that's and I, and I just want to say, having read some of it, it's really warmly written. It's really people-centric. So I thought it was a really excellent resource. Oh. And so they can also sign up for the summit. On yeah, the so we're going to have our next Clean Fashion Summit on the 14th of November. Um, for now, it's just kind of if you go to our website and sign up to our kind of newsletter or sign up to us, to get all of our alerts, then we'll be emailing that out soon in terms of like when registration is open. Um, but that will kind of be a continuation on this work, but looking more around kind of um, how can we have local production, but then also connect ethically with like overseas, international, global south. So it'll be a really interesting discussion, kind of bringing in some of the new work we've been doing around the weaving industry. Great, thank you. So, so a community for those people who sometimes feel that they're on the outside trying to learn as much as they can and that space to discuss, pass on, share. Um, and that being a key word, that was um, certainly uh, talked about in uh, the last talk where actually brands were engaging with uh, processes that they had um, uh, researched and developed but couldn't take further because of their cost model, but they wanted to pass them on to brands who could. So... Um, I'd love if there were any questions for Tina before we, um, before we call it a day, if anybody wants to know anything at all. Uh, otherwise, do we'll be here shortly. Lady there would like a mic. Armin is going to pass it to you. Hi. Um, you know, because there's so much wastage in the fashion industry, do you think maybe a possible solution to slow it down would be kind of like a, a similar print-on-demand model where... People are only choosing in a very slow fashion to order something. So there's this, not this huge, great wastage lying around, you know. So they're actually thinking about, do I really want this product? And they're not, people aren't basically making a whole stock of product and it's lying there, you know. And then soon it, it ends up in landfill. Your yeah. Thought? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that, that's the kind of models. Um, some people kind of featured in our journal, we've got great brands like Unquo, they're, they're a Nigerian brand, but the essence of their model is using waste to kind of create um, and then working with kind of um, women from refugee camps and upskilling them and using waste to kind of create product. Um, and even like as we talk about our knit club, it's about working like with what's available and then thinking about how we can, you know, kind of use what we have rather than out, like looking for something that exists in our mind and then creating it. So I, I think for sure in terms of like waste, um, one thing that we're, that we're trying to do is think about before we make, what's the reason why we're making? 
and then produced that way, and then focusing specifically on kind of natural fibers to think about the fact that, you know, we want to be making things that can decompose and that won't have this kind of like massive impact on our planet. And maybe have a. Thank a, you. A Great long... question. Oh, another one? Did you want to have another one? Okay. So I was just going to add, so it has a longer lifeline as well. So it's not this fast fashion constantly mm. we are consuming. Thank you. Thank you. So did we have another one, Armina? Great. Thank you. Thank you. And I like it, actually, while we're waiting, that you talked about the why, because that's been talked about today as well. It's a, the idea that you might see a gap in the market is not the reason why you should then try and fill it. What is your why? So somebody over there? Yes, thank you. Um, as a, I'm assuming that you're a social enterprise. Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, I'm assuming you're a social enterprise. Yeah. Um, what would you say is, um, I guess, like, as a, as, a, as a social enterprise in the fashion industry, what would you say is some of the things that you're coming up against as, a, as far as a business model? And maybe also, what are your thoughts on B Corp? Or is that an option for some of the things that you're doing? Um, yeah. I guess we're not yeah. kind of producing product at the moment. Everything that we're doing is still kind of testing. So we're not kind of looking for B Corp certification at the moment. Um, in terms of kind of uh, business models and things like that, I think just generally speaking in this area of the industry, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of like people understanding and that kind of mindset shift. So I think it still takes a long time for people to see value in the work that you do. And I think that's part of this movement and even linking that onto like the climate movement. I think there's still so much rallying in people seeing like what's the value, what are they actually paying for? I think with fashion, it's so easy because you see a product or you see a name, you see a celebrity, you see someone like that. We're so used to kind of that. So it's trying to shift that into thinking, how can we actually value this space? Um, there's loads of other groups who've been operating in this space for years now, and they still, I feel, don't have the recognition that they should in terms of like a global scale or within this industry. So I think for us, it's, it's about, and that's why we're so much about this ground level of people because it is about making sure that people can see that, well, we need to turn away from like what we're used to and we need to come into kind of this new space. So I think financially, it's gonna take a long time for us, not necessarily a long time, but it's still, it's still kind of that journey to have kind of, you know, that recognition in terms of value, um, because it's, I'll, I'll be honest, it's not 100% there yet across the industry. A lot of the time we need to look to other spaces in terms of finances so for example people who want to do more community building or people who want to look more at kind of um you know maybe like research when it comes to like farming or overseas but in terms of fashion you'll find very little support when it comes to like specifically fashion and uh, that's, i've met you haven't i yes hello again um so did you find your why are you creating product and do you know why why you're creating that product yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I have my why. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to share it, but yeah. No, no, Ooh. fair <laughs> enough, but great. So, um, you know, box number one, tick, and on to number two. Um, anybody else, would you like to ask a question? And if not, I would like to say thank you very much to you, Tina. Um, everything on uh, kalechi.com. Um, the journal is beautifully written, and of course it is about sharing that information and being part of something. So um, thank you very much for creating that, Tina. And I know you'd like to join with me to say yes. Thank you very much. Tina Wetchie. Well, thank you.